right YouTube, it's uh, Wow Sly, probably with my final, final uh, shack update for the solar side of things. Um, it's been racking my brains for quite a while since I've been playing around the solar and uh, the benefits um, that it has for me. Uh, the benefits for me, for the solar systems I've been playing with, experimenting with is probably a better word, is for uh, sort of emergency lighting, backup power, bit of power when, when camping and of course running the, uh, the radios in the shack. Um, so I'm absolutely belting it down today in rain so I'm getting no sunlight but I'll uh, quickly quickly go through what I've done. Is um, I like the set setup I had on the wall. It was only a basic setup but it was great and when we had our power cut I managed to, well I was able to slide it off the wall and take it in the house and run a load of lights in the house. Uh, also, when I was camping with a family, I was able to take it camping. The configuration was different back then. It was actually on a set of drawers, a small set of pine drawers, and all the accessories were in the drawers, and the system was built on the side of it. But anyway, we could take it camping. We charged up phones, um, DSs, run a small fridge, um, and uh, we, had, we had sufficient lighting in, in quite a massive um, tent. Um, and I wanted a system that was that was combined. I, um, over the past couple of years, I've had a couple of different go boxes. Uh, I like to have a go box I can take sort of when camping. I like to have the system on the wall, the shack. I like the system when I go out myself, sort of stealth camping or out with the radios. And it was doing my head in. I was swapping things around. I was building this and building that and really just going around in circles. Um, I, I thought ages ago about having of the um, a battery bank that was separate um, so I could just take away the battery bank and um, you know use that wasn't quite sure on the idea or keen on the idea and then uh, last night I just decided to go for it um, so I thought about it until I fell asleep in bed and then um, got up this morning and got on with it it's gonna be a bit of a bad demonstration today because my go box which is now my battery bank is pretty much flat I left it in the trailer and uh, the button for the voltmeter was pushed in um, so I've kind of like killed the battery on that but um, I'll quickly stand up get off my ass and show you what I've done I've just changed this slightly um, I've got a 12 volt socket coming in the three sockets there for uh, three solar panels but at the end of this lead I've got a double socket so I can plug in both my panels to one lead one socket I've got a main switch to turn off the um, solar panels so I can isolate them for any maintenance although you'd be silly not to unplug it anyway uh, I've got the main switch here for the system if I push that it turns the system off and then uh, I've got a another breaker switch for uh, my output which is two cigarette light adapters and two USB ports I'm using one for lighting uh, I've got this array homemade array of LED lights which I drilled like you know 10 holes for a bit of wood put in all the LED lights and then taped it up and just G clamped it on there so I can detach it and move it around that lights up the board and uh, the workstation which again is full of tools and wire um, so yeah, I've removed the uh, the old built-in battery bank I had that was down in this corner, all that was further up, and um, decided to instead of having my go box on charge at the front of the garage all the time, I only like having things like what you call preps that you use. There's no point having it if you're not going to use it. You know, sitting there going, I you know we might have a power cut one day. I might use my go box. So I've decided to integrate. Uh, my small go box the 7 amp hour battery and uh, utilize it as the battery bank for the system in the shack so if I turn the power on charge on the system is now running as my go box stroke emergency lighting uh, now as the battery bank um, so I can use the radios out here I can plug anything into this outlet here lights phone tablet uh, radios, I can charge my handset, power radios, charge my phone, you know, I can do all sorts out here with 12 volts. Uh, it's only a 10 amp system. Um, and I removed the LED voltmeters because they were constantly on 
Um, I didn't want to have to switch them on and off. I wanted to look at the system and see what was going on. So I went with analog because it uses no power compared to the blue voltmeters. Uh, I've learned over the time I don't really need to know how much power is coming in as long as I can see I've got power coming in. I don't need to know I've got power going out as long as I can see what's in the bank. So I've gone for an analog meter to see what's in the bank instead of three voltmeters. You know, just they were just for show really. Uh, and I learned just for show isn't always the way. Um, so now the mini go box I've got, the small go box, if I open it up, this is my emergency lighting kit. If we have a power cut, um, I used this a while ago, the insides of it, with this and the house. Um, got caught short one night, we had a power cut. So this was designed and built to go on the wall on sliding rails, so I can slide it off and take it elsewhere. Um, I had to take it in the house, we had a power cut, kids didn't like it. And all these LED lights and stuff, I ran through the house. We had uh, the kitchen, stairs, toilet, or bathroom, living room, and bedroom, um, all lit up. Um, thanks to these lights, half of them are from the power shop, the other half are just from eBay. And they were running off that system with, I think, the 7 amp hour battery, which actually is in here at the moment. Uh, I do have a bigger battery, a 16 amp, but it doesn't fit in there. And I don't want to go to a bigger case. So, anyway. With this closed, um, it's a nice portable emergency lighting kit. I've also used the lights in there to work on the car at night. I could just pick it up and move it around with me. I just put in the um, the USB adapter, which is in there somewhere. I don't want to start getting out, it's a pig to close. Um, the USB adapter in there, and then I can run USB lights with it. And um, yeah, I was doing some maintenance on the car on the dark all night, so it was handy for that. Or if I'm out uh, with the radios, I can just plug the radios in there and also in there I've got a splitter so I've got a double USB port no a double 12 volt socket with a USB port I can plug in there so I can run sort of two radios and still lights or charge my phone still got the volt meter on the front shouldn't really push it because you're going to see that I've got well under 10 volts oh no 11.6 volts so I haven't completely killed my battery yet but I'm not far off it but again they're only 15 quid batteries they're not dear um, so I've got my portable system I can take in the house for lighting, uh, I can use in the garden or the car, um, portable lighting system which is fantastic, um, it's a nice manageable size for sort of QRP radio stuff, I can fit it in a, a Bergen if need be, a backpack, uh, it'll fit in the footwell of the car nicely, um, so I can use the radios when static mobile without killing the battery in the car. Um, and um, yeah, it's multi-purpose. Again, I've mentioned before, everything has to be multi-purpose. So my emergency solar system, stroke lighting system, is uh, still as it was, 100% portable, capable of running lights, charging devices. Uh, I've even got an adapter to charge AA batteries and AAA batteries for my torches and headlights. And I can use it for radios, but it now doubles up as the battery bank um, for the system. Hey, we now have a load so I can demonstrate the lights. There was something else I was going to mention but I can't remember what it was now. Um, yeah, the system's still standalone. Uh, slide off the wall, I can take it in the house, I can rig it up to a bigger battery. Um, I've made up crocodile clip, lead, alligator clip with a female 12 volt socket so I can uh, the lead that goes into the go box to charge it I can plug it into there and then plug that onto another battery to uh, make it more universal I've got a 60 amp hour battery somewhere beneath me um, so I could run the shack off the 60 amp hour battery or take it in the house and run more devices um, but I like this one on charge all the time so when I do need to take it it's ready I've got a 10 watt panel on the roof which has given me always just under an amp. I think maximum it's like 0 0.8 amps on a good day. So probably today I'm getting half an amp or just under. So it's a trickle charge system, but that's more than enough power to charge up the 7.5 amp hour battery I've got in there. Um, it, it even manages to trickle charge a car battery, no problems, like a big six, 700 um, amp battery. Um, obviously it takes a bit longer. So right, let's see, trailer forts, um, yeah, we're all sorted, we're good to go, I've still got my system in the shack that I love, I like it on the wall, 
it's only basic, but I still like to be able to see it. You know, if something doesn't work, I can just fiddle around and make it work. It's all exposed. I like it exposed. I don't like the wires behind the board. It's neat and tidy with everything hidden away. Um, I just personally don't like it. So, as I said, we've got solar panel off, system off, and output off. So if I turn on the main system on, turn the solar panel on, and then turn on the outlet, there's my lights. And the system will go straight off because the battery's completely flat. <laughs> I think that shuts down at uh, 10 and a half volts, I'm not sure, we'll find out. Yeah, it's 12.2, oh, those kicked in. So literally the draw, the drain off these lights is telling the controller to shut down because there's just not enough power in the batteries. And I'm not going to get it today. Um, all right, let's swap batteries and give you a better demonstration. Right, this should be a little bit better. There we go. It's a bit more universal now. Just unplug the lead that came out of the uh, the mini go box, and uh, that's plugged into now this 16 amp hour battery. It's probably not as charged. Yeah, we've got a slightly better charge on this one. Um, again, I'll turn on the breaker there, which is my main power out switch, and the lights come on. Um, sufficient lighting for in here uh, I did have it laying flat across the board but created silhouettes and didn't light everything up then I had a nasty shadow on the desk so I've got them coming outwards on a G clamp so I can move them around take them off lay them flat for transporting or uh, you know I can add, move them somewhere else so I've got plenty of lighting they don't use they use very very little power uh, I can see everything that's on the desk which is great for the logbook when I tidy up and I can actually get to it um, so that goes to show how universal it is. I can uh, run the system standalone from my portable go box and uh, I've got the ability because of the alligator clips to charge other batteries um, which is quite handy. If you've got multiple batteries that need to be charged just turn the system off. It's as simple as swapping the battery over, turning the system on the system's now running off that 3.75 amp hour battery. There we go. So I can charge multiple batteries. If the car goes flat, bring the battery in here. If I need to charge up anything else that's 12 volt, bring it here, whack it on there. But I want to keep the portable system topped up so when I do need it, it's ready to go. Um, which I think is a bit more reliable than um, how I had it before where it was just on trickle charge because uh, I've got a small trickle charger panel which is on the front of the shack which was just kept that thing topped up um, so now I can free that up by plugging it into the end of this lead and have both panels coming in instead of one panel for this and then one panel for that I can have two panels coming in in sync right well that's my little update um, just to say I finally finally got the configuration working how I wanted to do it after having a shelf in the old house in the shed then I went to that big black box then I went to this thing here which was great a little PSU desktop that was great but again I just wasn't quite happy with it um, yeah and I seem to be quite happy with this so there we go. I've been talking to people quite a bit recently on uh, YouTube and Facebook about solar. People have been picking my brains and asking me questions. Uh, I'm not an expert. Uh, it is just a hobby. Uh, it helps with the hobbies. It's, it's an interest. Um, but yeah, I recommend it as a, as a project. It's, it's cheaper than building a model airplane and crashing into a hill. We've all been there. Uh, it's probably cheaper than fishing. People spend thousands on fishing. And it has a function. You can feed the power into your house with a big enough panel and an inverter, um, grid tie inverter, um, or you can, you know, you can go off grid. I've got the shack off grid. You can go. You could obviously have better lighting si solutions than that, and you could run a bedroom off grid. So yeah, it's uh, very handy for backup power, or if you need uh, power in a room or building, uh, like an outhouse that hasn't got power. You know, under quid, small system. It'll give you some light in a, in an outhouse or utility room. Um, you know, bigger battery supply, you could run an inverter, run a TV and so on. And uh, it's not cheap. I've mentioned this before, but people always ask me, so I'll mention it again. This whole system, 
Uh, if you go by the seven amp hour battery that's in there, that battery's 15 quid. These are six pound each. That was about six pound. They're about three pound. Uh, you can pay about three pound for a 12 volt socket. And they're about 6.95 now. Um, so five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 45, I don't know. Not a lot, depends on what you buy really, what you need it for. Um, and the panel, the panel was 15, 20 quid. I can't remember now, it's a few years old. So you can get a panel for, for 20 quid, tiny one. And the good thing is you can expand. You buy another panel, wire it up, you know, red to red, black to black. You want to double up your battery, buy another battery, always the same battery, same ampage, same voltage, and just wire them up. You can have six of these batteries, as long as all wired up red, red, and then black, 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 black. Wire them all together in parallel, and then you get the same 12 volts at the end, but you'll have six times the ampage, and the same with the panels. So you can start off small, um, and then add to it. So you can go out with 50 quid, get yourself a really basic system up and running just to power, you know, a light for a few hours. And then, um, you know, next month buy a bigger panel, the month after that buy a bigger battery, the month after that. And after three or four months, you'll have yourself quite a big system and you'll be learning as you go instead of going out spending hundreds of pounds and then scratching your head how it works. Um, so yeah, I finally got a system that works for me. And anyone watching this, um, who's actually asked me questions in the past with advice hopefully this helps and uh, gives people other ideas you know it's fun to do um, it's a great way to learn and um, you know supervised and uh, a low ampage it's a good you know project for parents and children to get involved in um, I think the sun's just coming out the rain stopped and uh, yeah I'm finally getting a good charge in this battery because uh, yeah it did go quite flat on Sunday, running the radio off it. And uh, well, I left it in the trailer. I think I left the button must have been pushed in. Well, it's still in the trailer because the radios are still in the trailer. I need to get them out. But yeah, brilliant. All um, all up and running. Right, catch you later, YouTube.